However, in 1983, Gary Griffith, a representative from Arista Records, saw Whitney perform in a nightclub in New York City. He was so taken with her that he convinced the head of Arista Records, Clive Davis, to make sure that he had made the time to see her perform. Davis was so impressed that he offered a worldwide recording contract that Whitney ended up signing. So she was busy doing the modeling thing, and then she and her mother doing that, and then she and her mother would go to different nightclubs and try to, you know, to do her own music career. And they went to this one nightclub, and Clyde Davis was there. Clyde Davis is obviously we know that was the the wind beneath Whitney's wings. He was her um, mentor, producer. Um, he was the person that is responsible for, responsible for everything that we see and know about Whitney Houston for as the look, especially in the 80s and the 90s. Clive Davis was one of the heads at Arista Records and a big time producer, um, star maker, um, and he he knows the game. He knows uh, when he sees something and the, the star quality and the potential that that person may have. And of course, he uh, grabbed Whitney as, um, as quickly as, he, as possible. Um, one of Clive's uh, representatives told him he had to see this girl. He had to hear this girl's voice. And he did. He went. And he was blown completely away by Whitney Houston's sound and her her pronunciation and just her love and passion behind the music. When she sang, it wasn't just singing. She would literally sing from her soul and from the depths of her heart and her spirit. She later made her first national televised debut with Davis at her side on the Merv Griffin Show. She went on the Merv Griffin Show and pretty much said, hey, he put her in the realms of... Rico